Well, I guess it could be worse. This is a slightly used Gibson SG Standard. It's a 2005 model according to the serial number and as you can see, it has suffered some minor damage. I picked this one up on eBay because I've been desperate for a neck repair project and also because I've wanted an SG since before I even started playing guitar. The SG is Gibson's best-selling model. It defined the sound of the 60s and it replaced the Les Paul and Gibson's catalogue for the majority of that decade. However, their thin body means that brakes like this are unfortunately all too common. I repaired a brake like this on an SG many years ago, so I know that this is fixable. Unfortunately, this repair is going to be a little more complicated this time round due to the fact that some of the wood is missing. So I can't just slather on some tight bond, clamp the neck back on and call it good. I'm going to have to get my hands dirty and do some proper woodwork. But before I can get to that point, I need to take off all of the hardware, clean this up and then analyse the damage to see just how I'm going to fix this. The extent of the damage here is quite significant. You might expect this to have separated along the original glue line, but that isn't the case. Gibson used tight bond formula glue to join the neck to the body in factory. This creates a bond stronger than the wood itself, as is evidenced by the brake tearing through the neck grain well above the glue line and blowing out the body wood on either side of the neck. This is where material has been lost and any attempted repair will require rebuilding the body surrounding the neck. In order to add wood back, I'll first need to remove some wood around the brake to give me a clean surface to start rebuilding. I found that these P90 templates from Crimson Guitars were just the right size for routing out the broken material and creating plugs that will fit in these spaces. These routes will remove the broken sections on either side of the neck and extend under the pit guard, which will minimise how much of this repair will be seen when complete. Ensuring the visible join aligns along the grain will also go a long way in making this a relatively invisible repair. These routes need to go to a depth and extend far enough into the neck pocket that it removes the awkward undercutting brakes that are at present preventing the neck from seating back into its original position. I do however want to leave much of that main brake surface intact as this will behave as indexing to ensure the neck goes back onto the body with its original alignment and back angle, both of extreme importance if I want this guitar to play properly at the end of this. These cavities will be plugged with fresh mahogany and I've endeavoured to choose pieces that will be a decent match for the grain direction as this will help disguise the repair. As these plugs have intruded on the pickup cavity, I need to reform the humbucker route. Another Crimson Guitars pickup template is used here. And while I was routing for pickups, I noticed that P90 routes would only be taking off a tiny amount of additional wood, a worthwhile price to pay to allow me the option of either a humbucker or P90 arrangement on this guitar in the future. Next, I need to work down the excess material and conform these repairs to the original shape of the body. This involves matching the curvature of the cutaways and carving in the front facing contours. The closer I can get to the original shape, the better. The horns are so deeply iconic to the SG design and I don't want to spoil their look with the incorrect shape.
Now the neck needs to be worked to fit into the body. This involves lopping off the remaining sections of the body still attached to either side of the neck, and then began the slow and careful process, much of which I did not commit to camera out of a desire to concentrate, of removing material and undercutting the fingerboard until it would meet snugly with the body. Once the fit was complete and a critical dry clamping run rehearsed to ensure everything would go to plan, I finally applied tight bond to all the surfaces, brought in the clamps, cleaned up the squeeze out, and walked away to let this set up overnight. The next morning I shot a video for Patreon supporters as I put a test set of strings onto the SG to ensure that the neck had indeed gone on with the correct alignment. Support via Patreon is very important for these kind of projects. Acts from the Grave can sometimes take weeks to put together and buying the guitars, tools and materials for these projects costs money. You'll notice that there's no paid promotion on this video. Gibson aren't exactly going to pay me to advertise the fact that their SGs can break, nor have I opted to put a Shade Lado Regens mobile gaming advert in here, despite them actually asking me if I could. If you do want to see more of this kind of content, then please consider funding it through Patreon. Links to that will be in the description, alongside affiliate links to certain retailers, to products that I'm using in this video, and other information that you should read. The description is there as a resource for you. I carefully populate it with information that I want you to know. It's not some secret place that I'm hoping you won't find. You should go and look in there sometime. At this point I was confident the join would support the weight of the body and that the repair had been a structural success. Now I need to make it look better. After some considerable time filling any gaps, sanding and scraping, I was finally ready to start applying finish and blending in the repair. I'm using Heritage Cherry and Clear Gloss Nitrocellulose from these little touch-up tins. Now this is the point where I'm going to have to manage expectations and discuss some ethics of repair. Matching the colour exactly is probably going to be extremely difficult for a number of reasons. One, Gibson SGs never really had a consistent cherry colour across their run. The colours tend to change a little bit from year to year, especially in the earlier days, so it's unlikely this touch-up tin was ever an exact match for this particular guitar's finish. Two, the colour is all dependent on how thin the finish was when being applied originally, something I have no real way of knowing, and since this is a transparent finish, the underlying wood is going to influence the colour tonality. The mahogany I've repaired with is a duller, browner colour than the brighter, more orange wood the guitar was built from, so this will affect the result. Three, nitrocellulose finishes change their colour with age and other factors. Colours will fade and yellow over time. This guitar was produced in 2005, so it's had the best part of 20 years now to do its thing, and it won't have done its thing evenly over the whole guitar. Some areas will have different colours than others where they've seen more sun or body contact. And four, blending transparent finishes is going to inevitably lead to a darker section at the transition as new colour is being applied on top of old. I'm obviously going to try and minimise that as much as possible, but it's just a simple reality I'll have to live with. The options are either a hard line between the two colours where they don't blend, or where they do blend gets a little bit darker. The latter option is less offensive to the eye. Now that I have several coats of clear gloss on this, I'll need to leave the nitro at least a week or two to cure before I can come in and do level sanding and polishing. Nitro can take a long time to cure, and in many ways it never truly does. It constantly and forever flashes off chemicals, and that's part of the reason why it cracks and yellows and ages the way it does. Although the most extreme part of this process will be over in a week or two, and that's when I'll come back and finally be able to finish this. So this is never going to be a completely invisible repair. The best I can hope for is when the pit guard goes in place, from the top at least, it's going to be very difficult to spot at a glance. The insides of the cutaways are going to be a dead giveaway that this has been repaired. The end grain pattern cutting across the middle of the body is very difficult to disguise with a transparent finish. However, you would need to be up close and personal with this guitar to spot any of that, and from an ethical perspective, I want to make it apparent to anyone who owns this guitar in the future that this has been repaired. 
Were this a solid black finish, then I could absolutely make this so invisible you'd never even know it had broken, which would lead to a situation where I or anyone else could be extremely dishonest when selling this guitar and charge more than it's actually worth. With a transparent finish though, no matter how well I've done that repair or how well I've blended in that finish, it's always going to be apparent that this guitar has had a neck break at some point in the past and no one will ever be tricked into paying too much. If this were a horribly badly done repair, then yeah, maybe I would want to hide it out of embarrassment, but this is a pretty damn good repair all things considered, and I don't mind having that visual reminder of the guitar's history on display. Chicks dig scars, as the saying goes, and this is part of what makes this guitar very interesting, and I want to make sure that people can see that when they look closely. I understand this is going to be a pretty anticlimactic conclusion to this video, as everyone will want to hear what this sounds like, and the guitar isn't yet in a state that's playable. There's still more work to do here. So that's where we'll be when we come back to this in a couple of weeks. We'll blend that finish, we'll get the hardware back on, we'll finally be able to hear how this sounds. I've got a pair of P90s to wind for this, some new electronics to put in, and I'm thinking about going for a long Maestro Vibrola on here for that vintage look and vintage tuning instability. So if you fancy seeing all of that, then make sure you're subscribed, follow on social media, and keep an eye on this channel as YouTube notifications can't be relied upon to tell you of when things are happening. Also, if you made it all the way to the end of this video and didn't bail out immediately when you heard a non-American accent, then please do leave me a comment about how you think this repair has gone and any ways in which you would have done it differently. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Doing this is still kind of terrifying though.